Friends, we've hit one heck of a milestone here on the Space Castle. Oh, uh, you finally hunkered down and finished Cutthroat Island, starring the incredible Gina Davis. Oh, yes. Uh. No, not, not that big of a milestone, but a huge one nonetheless. We've just surpassed over 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. It's been a heck of a 10-month journey to get here since switching Space Castle from its beginnings as a podcast to a full-time YouTube show. And none of this would have been possible without the support of family, friends, and viewers just like you. Uh, what is this? Uh, PBS? Get to the point, Big Bird. The point is, less than 9% of all YouTube channels ever reach 1,000 subscribers, and I couldn't be more thrilled. As such, we're doing something special this time around. Welcome aboard Space Castle, where our continuing mission is to explore all things nerdy in the universe. I'm your Captain DT, and I'm proud to have been such since March of 2023. Upon hitting that fabled 1,000 subscriber mark on YouTube, I polled all of you viewers across multiple social media platforms to see how we should celebrate, and... And? And well... You all wanted to know how Space Castle gets made. Oh, oh God. Oh God, where am I? So a little about me, I'm a career graphic designer who's been messing around in Adobe programs for the last 30 years. Ever since dad brought home that first copy of Photoshop for our modest family PC. Since then, it's been a lifelong love affair. I've designed everything from t-shirts and show flyers for local bands that I grew up following, to magazines and logos, to branding from national companies. But it's also something I really enjoy doing just for fun, and it's my main passion in life. And if I have a second main passion, it's movies. When I was much younger, well, that's not that much younger, I went to film school. <laughs> I went to one of the top schools in the country with an equipment cage valued in the millions, and I had an absolute blast making friends, building sets, learning the ins and outs of lighting, shooting, and editing film, I even did some on-screen performing, some improv, and even some puppeteering. Ooh, uh, exactly how many people have had their hands up your butt? But I... Excellent choice of words. Thank you for that, Goldblum. But I got to a point towards the end of my time in school where I really needed to decide if I wanted to pursue a career in movies and move to Los Angeles. There wasn't a whole ton of work to be had where I grew up aside from shooting local commercials and the like. But I also knew kids who had moved out there and were living like half a dozen people to a studio apartment, trying to make ends meet doing odd jobs and trying to build a resume and get bigger work in the film industry. The industry is pretty cutthroat, it's very intense, and right around that same time we were learning more and more about all the awful things that were happening behind the scenes in Hollywood. And so I decided California was not for me, and instead I dove headfirst into a career in graphic design. But I've always kept up with videography and editing as a hobby and occasionally as a way to make some money on the side. I've shot music videos, sports and exercise videos, and much more. And for a while, back in the day, I was doing a much more simple YouTube series called The Second Draft, where I dabbled in video game and beer reviews and messed around with green screens and lights in my one-bedroom apartment in Scottsdale, Arizona. I had a ton of fun doing it, but it was very sort of prototypical of what I'd eventually come to be doing on Space Castle. And I can't thank enough the cousins who bought me that first green screen and light kit to learn on for Christmas. Changed my life. And speaking of green screens, every episode of Space Castle starts off with two softbox lights and my Elgato collapsible green screen. Now I'm not sponsored by Elgato in any way, but I stress the importance of this green screen in what I do. And if you're somebody who's interested in doing something similar on your YouTube channel, or you're interested in doing some streaming on Twitch, I 100% recommend dropping the money on a good green screen like this one. This Elgato is wrinkle resistant, rolls up and down quickly and easily, and it's so smooth that it's very easy to light evenly so that I can key it out in editing. I've used green screens before where it's a guessing game on which shade of green is best to set as your key color. And too many times I've ended up with weird shadows or artifacting and the effect just has not been as believable or as smooth as I would have liked. I have never ever had this issue with my Elgato. I love it. The two softbox lights I use have LED bulbs and white screens to help diffuse the light evenly on both me and the green screen behind me, 
creating a crisp separation and an even plane of green that can very quickly and cleanly be removed when I go to key it. I record all my sound, both sitting and standing with an Audio-Technica AT2040 into a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, then going into GarageBand on my 2020 M1 MacBook Pro, which is pretty much my whole life. I love this thing. I would run into a burning building for it. It's totally a podcasting setup, but I still like the quality enough for video after some level adjustments and denoising if needed. If I'm standing, I'll just hold the mic. For segments where I'm seated, usually at the beginning and end of an episode, I'll have the AT2040 attached to a swing arm angled just below the camera frame. I adjust the gain for each situation and I'm off to the races. There's only been a few rare instances where I've had to record a line because it came out too soft or too hot. Would I like to have a sure mic? Absolutely, but I'm a graphic designer, y'all. I can't afford that shit. With sound sorted out, I record the video on a Panasonic Lumix G7 camera with a stock lens. The G7 is nearly a decade old at this point, if you can believe it, and it is still regarded as a great entry-level, budget-friendly, mirrorless camera. It's starting to show its age a little bit, but it shoots in 4K, it produces great video for what I need, and I love it. The only issue I've ever had with the camera is the lack of image stabilization for video. If I'm out shooting video on a golf course or something for work, I either have to use a gimbal or go with something else entirely. But set up on a stationary tripod in front of a nerd spouting nerdy nonsense? It's a kick-ass little camera. I set the G7 up on this deluxe tripod I picked up a little while back, mounted onto this teleprompter rig I actually found on Amazon for like 25 bucks. The camera fits into the back with a cloth covering to block out light, and you fit an iPad into the holder like so, and boom! Instant, super cheap, but very effective teleprompter. Uh, you mean you don't memorize every word and get it right on the first try, you fraud? I know, I'm sorry, but this whole episode is about ruining the illusion. You asked for it, viewers. From here, I'll go about filming each episode just like you see here. The footage is transferred from the camera's SD card and the sound is exported as WAV files from GarageBand. Before I pack everything up, I check the footage and the sound to make sure everything is crystal clear, and I usually have Goldblum record his lines before packing away the sound equipment. First things first, I'll open up Adobe Audition and I'll make sure the LUFs for the sound levels are good and denoise if necessary. LUFs, or L-U-F-S, stands for Loudness Units Full Scale. It's a measurement of loudness that factors in both human perception and electrical signal. If you've ever listened to a podcast that was way too quiet or way too loud, they didn't take the time to adjust their gain before recording, and they didn't take the time to adjust their luffs before exporting and publishing. The standard loudness full unit scale for podcasts is negative 18. For video, such as with YouTube, the standard is negative 15 luffs. Sound is such an important factor into the enjoyment of something like video, and I try my hardest with the equipment I have to make sure that every Space Castle episode sounds as good as it can. Next up, it's Goldblum's time to shine. There used to be a very different process for him where I would animate his speech frame by frame by hand. It was really time consuming, though I thought the effect was hilarious in its minimalistic way of conveying emotion and humor. But now he's gone full 21st century. I've got a template built out in Adobe After Effects wherein I replace Goldblum's lines from the previous episode with the new ones and they're automatically linked to a waveform set against this really cool glitched video background. Say hi, Goldblum. Uh, hello, yes, uh, yes, uh, I feel naked and, oh, uh, strangely aroused. Right, um, when everything is dialed in, I'll export the clip. It gets imported into Premiere Pro and I'll add in his eyes where appropriate. I've got a set for every situation and emotion. Uh, why don't you add the eyes in After Effects before exporting? I don't know. A complete series of Goldblum clips is exported, and now I have all the Goldblum and DT I need to make a space castle. Premiere Pro is where I do all my main editing for each video. It's pretty quick, easy, and I've been using it since film school, so it pretty much comes second nature at this point. When it wants to behave. Premiere Pro is squirrely, for lack of a better word. Sometimes things just don't move right on the timeline, or sometimes it does some goofy sh** you didn't ask it to do. But for the most part, it's pretty easy when you need it to be, and powerful when you want it to be. The Space Castle set is built into multiple pieces. It's all designed and constructed in Photoshop, and the set itself, with the two TV screens and the stars passing by outside the window, are all separate layers, with the star field being animated directly in Premiere Pro with keyframes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. 
uh, Starfield uh, being animated. Hey, good one. Easily our most ambitious game ever. <laughs> From here, Goldblum's footage and the footage I filmed of myself and all the WAV files I've recorded are imported in and lined up so they match as closely as possible. I'll cue myself either by clapping or snapping my fingers so I have an indicator on the timeline to match everything up. Snap, 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 snap. The native camera sound is then deleted, so all I've got is clean, crisp sound matched up to the video. I'll do this for both the standing footage and the footage of me sitting in the outros and intros of each video. I'll key out the green screen, I'll crop the picture so that nothing outside the green screen edges are visible, and... Now I start the arduous process of editing out all my outtakes. Oh. Fuck. Fuck. Accompaniments. 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 Fuck. 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 Right. Once that's all sorted out and all the proper clips are separated out, I will arrange them together, starting with the intro sequence, using a film in the public domain on the screen next to Goldblum's. Intrepid and perceptive Space Castle viewers will notice that the movie playing on the screen is chosen to match the theme or thesis of the episode. Impress your friends with this absolutely pointless bit of trivia. I'll pick out public, royalty-free music, almost always something fun and lo-fi to loop throughout the video. However, I've commissioned a really good friend of mine and an amazing musician and sound designer to create all new original music. That's coming soon, and it's going to be awesome. And I'll keep working through the video this way, writing in more visual gags as they come to me, tweaking things as needed, and adding in all the visual accompaniments for whatever it is I happen to be talking about. The average episode will take me about 12 to 18 hours to edit to completion and is then exported as a 4K MP4, ready to be uploaded to YouTube and placed directly into your eyeballs. And I am so incredibly thankful for all the eyeballs these videos have found their way into. I'm actually still kind of stunned that Space Castle has hit over a thousand subscribers and I just want to thank everybody who's jumped aboard over the course of the last year or so. 2024 is going to be super fun with all kinds of neat stuff on the way, and I hope everybody is glad that they're along for the ride. And as always, but never in routine, I want to say a special thanks to the Galactonaut crew over at patreon.com slash spacecastleshow. We've just welcomed our newest member, Box of Issues. We are super psyched to have you aboard and joining in on all the fun over on the Space Castle Discord. You Galactonauts have just been incredible in this journey over the last year. Your support, your friendship, feedback, and excitement have been so inspiring and encouraging as I do this bit of silliness here on the internet. And man, I'm gonna have to find a different way to list everybody who's on this screen. This group of ours is growing and I'm so proud of it. Thanks everybody for watching and joining me on this special episode of Space Castle, where it's our continuing mission to explore all things nerdy in the universe. If I miss something in this behind the scenes look, or if you have other questions about how the show is made, Please feel free to leave a comment below. I'll be sure to leave you a response and answer as best I can. In the meantime, thanks again for everything, and here's to a great 2024 and year two of Space Castle. This is your Captain DT, signing off.